everybody, it's Christopher Naiman back again for another video on my Singer 401A. What are we going to talk about today? Well, I'm going to demonstrate a few things for you today. I'm going to demonstrate the ruffler foot. What is a ruffler foot? Well, for all you gals out there who like to make those pretty little ruffles for all those little girls in your life, you know, for all those grandmas who are in love with ruffles, you know, when I see a ruffle, it reminds me of my mother's kitchen curtains back then. Uh, French, French, what a French something curtains she always had. Um, I'm not a big ruffle fan, but that doesn't mean I don't know how to do it, and I can show you. So stay tuned, because I got some other tips I'm going to show you as well. Don't go away, I'll be right back. Welcome back everybody. Now, a couple things I want to point out to you first. I wanted to mention this in my previous videos. I did a video on the black button foot. Now that black button foot is a specific foot made um, by certain companies for their machines. There was a lady online asking about if she can get it in, in that version for her FAF machine. I told her to look it up and research. Uh, she didn't know what to look for it under. So I just say, here's what I suggest. Now I want to tell everybody about how to learn how to research. When you want to learn how to research things, find information out, for example, you go online to Google and you would say, FAF generic presser feet. Okay? That's how you would look it up. Any information you want to look up and research, you can do it. This is not the library. This is the internet. You don't have to get in your car and drive and look through catalogs. You just enter in a search line and you can find anything you want. There is no excuse today. Okay? All right. With that said, let's move forward. Okay, so I want to show you something. I've got this jean material that I've been testing on. I've got brown thread on the top, and let me show you how you know if your stitch is balanced properly. Look, at there's brown on top I just did, and then look, on the back is white, okay? And you can see there's no brown popping up on the bottom where the bobbin thread is, there's white, and there's no white popping up on the top where there's brown. That's how you know your machine is perfectly balanced. That's perfectly balanced. And guess what? That balance I have, it's at three. It's at three. How about that, huh? Okay, so with that said, I also want to show you something. I did a video on that black foot, like I said, because on the modern, machi modern machines, they are not built like the tanks. I don't care how expensive the machine is, it still does not have the all metal parts like these machines do. Okay, now I want to show you how wonderful this goes over the humps on the jeans. Are you ready? Now, I'm going fast too. Oh, before we go any further, I want to show you my, st my stitch length is at 10. Okay? All right. And I don't understand what and my cat doesn't bother me until I start filming videos and she wraps herself around my legs. So, how many of you are cat owners out there? Do you understand? You, you get what I'm saying. Okay, so now watch. Look at it go over that hump. No problems. No freaking problems, right? These vintage machines, this is why we buy them. They're tanks. Watch this. Look at that. When we're over that hump, no problem. You can't do that on a modern machine, okay? You're gonna bust the needle and everything else. All right, isn't that phenomenal? Let's try this one more time. And then we're gonna go to the ruffler. Just want you to see this. Watch how this is gonna go over that. Look at that. Look at that. Went right over that, look at that. Look at that, like butter, like butter, right? How can it? How can you sew and not be excited to see something like that? Huh? Freaking awesome. All right, let's pause this video and come back and we're going to hook up that ruffler foot. All right? Okay, guys, hold on. All right, now, this ruffler foot is for my 401 Singer uh, Slant Shank machine. So this was built for the Slant Shank, okay? Now, before I attach this to the machine, I want to go over some things here. Up here determines how many stitches it will stitch before it, it clicks into doing a, a pleat or what we call a ruffle. All right, and what we've got here is you've got every one, which means it'll, it'll ruffle every stitch. Then it's got, uh, see, I think that's a six and a 12, and there's a star here. When you put this, when you move this over to the star position, that means it will not pleat for you. It'll just do a straight stitch, okay? And it's a lot easier to do this when it's on the the, foot, the presser foot, I'll wait to do that. Now, this little bar here, do you know what that is? That you adjust, okay? You can twist this and move it up 
or down. That determines the amount of bite. And this is the bite here. This is going to determine the amount of bite that this is going to do um, to push that uh, pleat forward. Okay, here is that little finger with the little little um, claws in the front. That pushes your fabric forward to do the pleat. And this little orange button here to make that adjustment will determine how far, how, okay, let me give you an example here. All right, this is that little claw pretend, okay? And you, um, this is your fabric on the, on the bottom here. That little claw, you can have it set to go all the way, which will push the fabric like this, or you can set it to push just, just a little bit like this. That's what that orange button is for. Do you understand that so far? You'll understand once I hook up, okay? And then you can do two layers of material. You could put the top layer of material, um, will go under this black claw, I'm going to call it. It feeds under that black claw. And then your bottom material that you don't want ruffled will go on the bottom. So as you're feeding the top material and the bottom at the same time, the top material will be pleated, the bottom material will not be pleated, which means if you're doing little girls' ruffle skirts, if you're doing a bed skirt uh, for around your bed, you know, the, the ruffles around the bed skirts, those kinds of things. This ruffler foot has been out for a long time. They make a ruffler foot for every brand and model machine. Um, very fortunate that they're making this brand new for the slant shank machines still, because uh, it's getting difficult to find a lot of feet for the slant shank. And that's another question people ask me, where do I get all my feet? And I'm gonna tell you, and I'm gonna teach you again how to research on your own. You go to Google, okay, or you go to eBay, and you enter Singer Slant Shank Presser Feet or Singer Slant Shank Ruffler, or Singer Slant Shank blah 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 blah. Any brand you want to look up, that's how you do it. So it's very important, uh, like I said, we're living in a technological era. We have a computer. You do not have to get in your car. You do not have to drive to the library. You do not have to go to a card file to research. All you do is enter the information on a line to research. If you cannot do that, I cannot help you, okay? You have to be able to be able to do that for yourself. I can tell you how to do it, and you need to do it on your own, okay? And I can teach you the things that I do here to show you how to work things, because that's what I love to do. But if I'm not getting any reciprocation from your side and any effort, I, I can't reply to you. I'm sorry, okay? All right, so here we go. Now let me put this on the, on the machine, and we'll get going from here. All right, so here we go. Now, this part here is, uh, hooks behind the, the, the screw on your presser bar. There is a arm here that gets connected over the needle bar, okay? So I have my needle in, I'm gonna show you how much easier this is to do. It's not as hard as you think. You may have to unscrew your screw. Now, this is the screw that I put on here. Uh, I don't know what your foot looks like. You may have a different type of screw, but this is the one I like. I like this type of screw. It's bigger because it's got a little handle on there. So what you do is you're going to make sure your needle is up all the way. You're going to connect that into the needle. You can take your needle out if you want. Okay, so that goes over the presser, the needle bar. This goes back there and it gets screwed tight. You see how easy that is? A lot of people would like to take their needle out. I find that you really don't have to. Now, I'm going to tighten this a little bit with my screwdriver, okay? And we're going to make sure we're using a straight stitch to do this. All right, how's that look so far? Can you see that okay? All right, I hope so, make sure. Okay, let me see. So maybe I have to lower the camera a bit for you all. Let's see how that looks. How's that? All right, so here's what we're going to do. I've got, I'm going to switch this to six stitches per, um, it's going to go one, two, three, four, five, and then a six is going to push through. At least that's what it's supposed to be. But sometimes they're one or two stitches off. So now what, what makes a big difference too is your stitch length on your machine. Uh, now I'm going to increase my stitch length to number 10 on here. Okay, so my stitch length is going to be 10. Now here's what I want to show you. I'm going to put the fabric in and you have to put it, I'm sure you can show you this, okay, you have to put it under this bar if you want to gather. Okay, this is the first one we're going to do is you just want to gather. Okay, and then I'm going to follow a line on the side of my plate here to guide the fabric in. Now, let me just, you want to make sure it's in a straight needle position. Make sure your foot is down. Okay, remember, give your foot a love tap. 
Joyce Drexler used to tell us, love tap. Okay, you know what happens if you don't put your foot down? And you try sewing. You're going to get a whole lot of thread underneath. That's what happens. Okay, so I'm just going to guide the fabric up here with my hand. And remember, this is um, now you see the bite. This is what I'm talking about. The bite right here. This this orange button controls the bite. Okay. All right, now that's six. six that's supposed to be six. Six set at six stitches. In other words, it'll pleat every six stitches. Let's count that. Let's see what that does. Let's see. Let's go one, two, three. Okay. All right. Now there, just did it. So let's count it. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, see, it did it five or six. Okay. So it's about right. Okay. So that's what we do there. So that's at every six stitches. Okay. And you can see what the bite is. Now. If I want to make my stitch length shorter, I'll get a, a smaller, a tighter pleat. Now here's what, here's what that kind of ruffle right there. I'm going to make my stitch length even shorter. I'm going to go to 15 stitches, or 15 uh, stitches per inch. At least that's what I think it is on there. I don't know, 15, let's just, that's, on my machine it's set of 15, so let's put that down. Let's see what happens at a shorter stitch length. Now let's do it even shorter now. Okay, and let's take this, and let's, let's see what happens when I do this. You see what I, when I switch that bite? See, it's going shorter. You see the shorterness? See how that bite goes shorter? Now let's set it back to long again. Oops, let's bring, it's gotta bring this up first. Okay, let's switch that down to the bottom again, and I'll give it deeper. All right, do you see that? See, this is all about playing, everyone. You just want to play. You got to test and play, then you'll know. You'll know in the future what what you want. But here's here's how much gathering that is. Now let's do another one. Let's do another one at um, let's say uh, let's do the uh, twelve. Let's do it at twelve and see what it does at twelve. You're gonna see a difference at twelve. Okay, foot down. Let's do that. Oops, there it goes. Let me pull that forward. I didn't get it. I didn't get under there. There. All right. See that? Now, what happens if I set this to one, where it's going to pleat every time? You ready? Let's do that. Look at that. And let's make my stitch length longer for that one. Let's make my stitch length a lot longer. Oh, that's that's cool. That's that that's really nice. Look at that. That's really. Say that's every one. But let's make the stitch length really long, and let's see what it does now on the on the where it pleats every time. Where I got it set to pleat at every stitch, which is over here at one. See, the hardest thing is just getting it in here. And always give yourself extra seam allowance there when you cut your fabric so you can get it in there well. Now, this is at the longest stitch length I have, okay? I have this set for the longest stitch length. And that's pleating at every stitch, okay? Let's take that out and see. There it is. What a nice bed skirt that would make, huh? And that's the also for the little girl. You could do a little girl's ruffle. Now, now I haven't tried this myself yet, but I, I watched how it's done. And let's give it a shot. So, I've got a top and bottom row I'm going to do. Let me put the top in first. That's my top. And then the bottom, I'm going to put fabric on the bottom, but not through the, the claws. It's just going to be underneath. Okay? And we want to keep our fabrics even on the edge over on this side on the edge. Keep them as even as you can as, you're, as they're feeding. Now, pretend this is uh, where you're making a little ruffled skirt. You ready? And don't do this, don't sew fast. Don't sew fast with a ruffler. Take your time. Take your time.
You know what? I want to set this camera up on the tripod because I want you to watch how I hold my hands to do this. Okay? All right, hold on. Okay. Now, taking a lesson in industrial sewing, this is how we're going to hold our hands to do this. Now, I want you to also notice that over here is a line on my throat plate. And I'm going to follow that line, the fabric on the edge of that line. Now, here's the top fabric that's actually pleating as it goes. Here's the bottom fabric that's going to say stay straight. So I've got my hand down here and I'm going to guide this fabric down here like this. Remember, this fabric is not grabbing and pulling. It's just feeding through gently, okay? It's the top fabric that's going to be grabbing and pulling, okay? So what I want to do with this top fabric is I want to use my hands like a, like, hold it like a duck bill. Let me see if I can get some more. Right here. Hold it like a duck bill like we teach in industrial sewing and hold it gently. You don't want to hold it too hard. You just want to hold it gently to guide. Are you ready? Watch me. See, because that top fabric is going in. This is why you want to do this slowly, okay? You want to do this slowly. I'm coming to the end now, so I'm just going to move this out of the way. Keep this even here. And now, let's see, let's see the results of how I was holding this. Alright, so there's the pleating, okay? And then, if this was a dress, you turn it, and there's the dress put together. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that nice? And look how much time that's saved. Now, the only thing you've got to do is figure out the distance, okay? Because this is gathering at a ratio, a much larger ratio of the top fabric. So, my suggestion would be, and if this is a little girl's, is to test and see what your ratio would be. And that's where you have to do accordingly adjusting. There's no exact formula I can give you. You have to figure this out on your own. Now, if I were making this and I was making a little girl's skirt, okay, I would definitely, definitely at least do three times the length, the width that is, three times the width for the gathering part and figure it out from there. Start with that. It's just you, it's an equation you have to figure out because of your adjustments. And then, like I said, I want you to see what my setting, my length setting was on. See, I had it down all the way, the longest stitch length for that. Okay, so your stitch length on your machine, how many stitches you set this for? This was one. This was every one. You could do it like every six, but look, every little girl likes that little pleated. And this would make a beautiful bed skirt like that, don't you think? If you like the pleated bed skirts. All right, guys. That is the tips for today. And remember, everyone, please, there is nothing you can't do if you apply yourself. Okay? You have to believe in yourself. You have to apply yourself. And next time, if you want to ask a question about something, like where to buy something, do a Google search and look it up. Okay? Because it's, everything is right at your fingertips today. I make these videos to help you because there are things in life we need to show things. This is hands-on stuff that we need to be shown. And a lot of you are visual, so when you watch me do these things, you learn. That's how I learn my whole life is watching. Okay? So there's nothing you cannot do if you believe in yourself. And remember, don't ask someone else to do something for you that you're not willing to do yourself. Okay? That's a little rule of life. Take care. Try this. Post pictures. Um, if, you're on my, if you're on my Facebook group, I would love you to join. Um, there's a link in my blog. I put the link on my blog all the time. But I would love to see your results too. Okay? Garment sewing is back big time. Big time. And home deck, lots of home deck. All right. Take care, everyone. You Love you so much. And please, just remember, take an initiative on your own first. Okay? All right. Love you. Bye-bye.